I'm going to talk about JFrog, a cloud service provider company, a cloud technology service provider company, uh, ticker symbol FROG. We're going to talk a lot about uh, what JFrog does in general, what products do they support, what is their business model, how they make money, how they have been growing. This is the company they had ipo in 2020 so it's recently started trading i'm going to talk a lot more stuff about the revenue and growth and some of the information around their quarterly earning in q3 2020 um, also i'll be sharing some of my thoughts what i'm going to do uh, whether i'm going to buy this stock or not it took me a lot of time to do the research so if you can click the like button subscribe to my channel for more videos in future jfrog ticker symbol frog it is trading around 64 to 65 dollars today's trading day and as you can see their market cap is 5.93 billion dollars 52 week range is 57 to 95 dollars i'll talk more about the pricing and stuff later on in this video went all the way up to 85 dollars and right now it's at 64 dollars ipos were pretty much hyped during the time in 2020 but once again looking at this uh, this trend when the stock launches it goes uh, higher uh, with the hype uh, then it goes lower and that might be a buying opportunity if there is more correction in the market this may go up to 50 or 55 dollars this is just my opinion i'm not a financial advisor and this is not a stock buying or selling advice so do your own due diligence and research before you buy and sell this stock i'm just sharing what i found in my research what i'm thinking as my personal opinion jfrog is uh, is a global standard for shipping high quality software continuously and and efficiently now if you think about a software or an app that is delivered to you maybe on your device or on your phone there are various processes but the main two processes are to building the actual software that's the first one and the second one is to deliver the software to the users to the end user and which is a pretty complex process i made it pretty simple to explain it to you but it's uh, it's a pretty interesting uh, pretty high tech and and complex process jfrog has more than 5000 customers in the in the community and space of cloud software and application support with more than 3 million developers across the world after the ipo they have been spending a lot more money into their growth and customer acquisition jfrog platform allows to deliver the software releases more quickly and efficiently jfrog provides the business's flexibility and scalability Pretend, let's say you're building a software, so you're good at identifying what your users need, how you want to enhance the features of your software, um, and you want to build the features. But not every company is great at deploying um, and delivering these new updates to their users fast enough. And that's the gap that JFrog fills for their, for their client. Uh, it's a highly available enterprise DevOps platform that empowers their clients with trusted and expedited software releases process. And once again, this is not a one-time thing. After you've deployed the software, it is an ongoing process where you enhance your features, you add additional features, you are releasing those features and versions to your um, current end users, and that has to happen seamlessly and most efficiently and more than anything, pretty quickly to acquire more and more customers or more and more end users for your app or for your softwares. This is what JFrog does at a glance. JFrog is a unified platform for continuous software release management system. So after the software is built, there are future versions and JFrog is the service provider that helps you release the version faster and efficiently. They have more than 5,800 um, customers their businesses that they are supporting at the moment. Their uh, revenue projection is 139 million and their year over year growth in 2020 is 46%, which is pretty, pretty big. Um, and once again, going back, um, their market cap is 5.93 billion. So it's not a huge market cap, like $50 billion that we have seen for some of these companies. They drive need for software innovations. 
And what that means in terms of customer experience is it reduces time to market. As I explained, it helps them with the incremental updates and there is no disruption for the end user in terms of user experience. This is the revenue growth, as you can see. Um, the 2019 uh, revenue was $74 million and 2020 year-to-date revenue is 46% growth with $108 million. Of course, there is some projections um, in terms of Q4 revenue, but once again, it's a high growth, high revenue company and uh, their infrastructure is already, they're working on getting a lot more, more user acquisition in terms of big corporations and the revenue can spike in 2021. Um, and they have strong cash flow. Their cash flow, as you can see, went up from 5.4 percent to 13 percent from 2019 to 2020. So uh, all in all, the company is doing pretty good, even post IPO. And this is their Q3 earning uh, data that I researched. Uh, please do your due diligence and check that as well on your end before you buy or sell this stock. This is not a financial advice. But what I found is in 2020, their um, total subscription revenue was $38 million, which, uh, which, is, uh, which is up from $27 million in, uh, in September 2019. Now, their total revenue as well for nine months revenue uh, is, uh, is $108 million compared to $73 compared to 73 million in 2019. Their gross profit is 31 million um, compared to 22 million in 2019. However, they have higher operating expenses, as you can see, 37 million um, compared to $25 million um, last year um, in September. If they can ramp up their earning fast enough and if they sustain their operating cost, that will make this company a lot profitable, which is precisely mentioned here. So as you can see in 2020, the non-GAAP gross profit is 32 million compared to 2019 of 22 million, uh, which puts them into nine months uh, um, non-GAAP gross profit to 89 million compared to 61 million in 2009 and in 2000 and 19 so more or less 30 million dollars is the is the spike and they're expecting to do 41.4 million in q4 so i think if you combine all this um, they are doing pretty uh pretty aggressively in terms of revenue and which is what brought them the growth of 46 percent if they sustain this growth in 2021 the company is going to be pretty profitable and as i mentioned they're um, market cap is right now uh, five or six less than six billion dollars. Um, I think there's a good potential that the market cap can go as high as ten billion dollars, as most of the technologies uh, technology companies can accomplish. So I wanted to bring it to your attention. I wanted to share a bit of a history as to what happened with this IPO. So even before FROG stock uh, was available to the trading, um, they provided a proposed range of $33 to $37 for the stock. JFrog decided to keep the price around 39 to 41, looking at how fast the IPO was filled in. But when it came to the IPO listing price, they proposed a price of $44. And after $44, the share ran up. Uh, in terms of doing analysis of the stock price, um, I wanted to share this graph right here. Stock started trading. It was around um, 60, $4. Um, after that $64 in, in, in October, um, it went all the way to $74. That, that's, what, uh, that's what happened to most of the IPO. Uh, when the IPO, the stock started uh, trading post IPO, it went up and that the same thing happened to uh, FROG as well. It went as high as $85. From $85 in November, the stock came back to $63, $64. And uh, once again, it went up to $70. And right now it's $64. But what I'm trying to mention is if the company performs well, if they keep up with the revenue, if they keep their operational costs down, that will make them even more profitable because they're acquiring their users and, and businesses uh, faster than before with the help from the funding that they got from IPO, 
I think the company can do a lot better, given that the stock has uh, has come down significantly from $84 to $64. Personally, me, I'm going to keep an eye out if I can get it around 60 or maybe 55. If you want to keep an eye out, one another option is to you start a very teeny tiny uh, position into uh, JFrog and buy it at around 62-ish or $63 and uh, start buying little by little. If the stock goes down, they have their volume pretty sustained as, as you can see, um, uh, your da their daily volume is somewhere between one and two million stocks. In November, uh, out of 10 analysts, one said strong buy, three said buy. What to notice here is that no, none of the analysts mentioned to, to sell. However, one analyst does sound a bit bearish, suggested maybe underperform, May, the stock may underperform, but as I mentioned, it already has underperformed more than 20% or maybe more than 20 more than 20 to 25% given that it was $85 and right now it's $64. Once again, I'm not a financial advisor, so do your own due diligence before you buy or sell this stock. I merely, I just wanted to share what I found out, uh, my research, um, and hopefully it helps you. Uh, please subscribe to my channel for future videos.